Introverts and extroverts, you probably identify with one and know people who belong to the other. And kind of like the Zodiac, technically everyone is equal. But over time, we all develop biases around which social disposition is the superior one, which one is more fun, more exciting, better in bed. But what if that bias is based on an incorrect interpretation? And also, can we enter ambivert slash multivert into the chat? We're gonna address all of this and a little bit more right after a word from our sponsor. You guessed it, Squarespace. This video is sponsored by Squarespace. Squarespace is an all-in-one website platform for entrepreneurs to stand out and succeed online. Whether you're just starting out or you have a growing brand, Squarespace makes it easy to engage with your audience, have a beautiful website, and to sell anything from products to content to time, all in one place on your terms. Check out squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash for 10% off the purchase of a website or domain. This will likely be a refresher for you. An introvert is somebody who is deeply concerned with their internal experiences, extrovert with the external experience. Introverts are introspective, they're self-aware, and they're intrinsically motivated, meaning it's how they feel on the inside that makes them feel good about a situation. For example, I love that interaction. I feel like I was really aligned with my values. An extrovert is more action-oriented, more assertive, really great at setting boundaries, and they look for external motivations, like that was a great encounter. I got really positive feedback from other individuals. Another indicator is how these individuals act in social settings, namely with large amounts of people. Take for example, this bucket of water. Let's say this is a dense social situation. An introvert here tends to feel drained by these, whereas extroverts tend to feel energized, it fills them up. After hearing that list, some of you might still be true introverts or extroverts and others might be like, ma'am, I'm kind of a bit of both on those lists. In such a case, you could identify like I do as a multivert. For example, when it comes to social settings, I love being extroverted and I feel like I can do this meaningfully when I have a lot of introverted time first. Secondly, your girl loves external praise and I love positive feedback, but it's only meaningful for me if I first determine that internally I feel good about what I'm being praised for. More on this later, but for now, let's get back to our big question at hand. Who is the superior lover? Now I'm gonna be honest with you guys. I actually think most people would assume that it's extroverts, especially in the Western world where we value entertainment pretty much over everything else. Take for example, the snippet from a book that I'm listening to right now. People who score high on extroversion are highly drawn to all positive emotions and they are excited by any chance to experience pleasure, to seek thrills, to win social approval. They are motivated more by the lure of rewards than the fear of punishment. They tend to dive into most situations looking for what goodies can be had. If you follow extroverts on social media, you'll see their post team with comments like, can't wait, so excited, love my life. People who score high on extroversion are warm, gregarious excitement seekers. People who score high on extroversion are more sociable than retiring, more fun-loving than sober, more affectionate than reserved, more spontaneous than inhibited, and more talkative than quiet. Extroverts don't have to be out with people all the time. They just are driven to powerfully pursue some sort of pleasure, some sort of positive reward. Extroversion is generally a good trait to have, since high extroverts are often so much fun to be around. People who score low on extroversion just seem more chill. Such people have slower and less volatile emotional responses to things. They are often creative, thoughtful, and intentional. They like having deeper relationships with fewer people. Their way of experiencing the world is not lesser than that of high extroversion people, just different. I don't know about you, but to me, that sounds like describing one friend as an incredible astronomer who's an even better dancer who, by the way, tells the best stories. And your other friend as well, Jane, a famous psychologist named Hans Eysenck, he had a completely different interpretation. And to explain that, I'm gonna to need to use these vibrators by Dame. Eysenck believed that introverts naturally have higher levels of arousal in their brains. And because they're already stimulated internally, they don't need or want as much external stimulation. In fact, too much can be overwhelming. Extroverts, on the other hand, seek out more external stimulation to reach a comfortable level of arousal. 
So instead of seeing introverts as lacking social skills, we can see them as having rich internal lives. Now, I think it's important to note, when we're discussing anything that seems binary, often there is a spectrum at play. And so while there is healthy extroversion and introversion, I also think when these things are performative or pathologic, meaning caused by illness, you can enter into the realm of being unhealthy. That's why I wanna talk more about the multivert, and for that, I need the help of my purple alligator. A multivert is the kind of person who understands there's a time and a place for each social disposition. Now, I actually think that introverts who know how to be extroverted can tend to have more success as multiverts, since many people accept the fact that, yeah, a lot of people need some time to warm up and to open up. On the flip side, though, extroverts don't get as much wiggle room because people don't know how to act when these people cool down, which can often be misinterpreted as shrinking down, which leads to a lot of performative extroverts and I've been there before. And to combat this, I've started to really ask myself in every scenario, what does the moment need? Do I really have something to show people in this moment? Or do I just need to be seen in this moment? On the flip side, if you're an introvert, you may have to ask yourself, hey, could a lot more be gained if I step up, even though traditionally I'm the kind of person who sits back? So I guess the TLDR of this whole video is it's better if everybody's a little bit of both and somewhere in that sweet spot middle. And I know this can be a little unsatisfying, kind of like this conversation. Hey, can I bring my friend to your party? Um, maybe. What are they like in social settings? Well, it kind of depends on the day, the environment, what's gonna happen to her just before the party and what she plans to do after. Huh? So here's a more satisfying answer. Personally, I believe that introverts who skew a little closer to the middle are the ideal romantic partners, the best lovers, the most exciting fuck buddies because introverts know how to be with other people because they have lots of experience and practice being with themselves. Introverts have complex processing processes, which means they give a lot of attention before responding. Healthy introverts tend to be more self-aware, and those who follow me for a long time know that I always reference this TED Talk where the researcher discussed three of the crucial elements to a long-term healthy romantic relationships, and two out of the three components had everything to do with yourself and only one had to do with your partner. Lastly, because there's not a lot of pressure for introverts to be constantly contributing because it's not part of their MO, usually they only give what they know that they got. On the flip side, extroverts might just be compelled to fill up the space. For example, my dad is like the classic extroverted man. And recently I went back to Toronto, went to an aquarium, and I asked my dad some question about some fish because my dad, I literally make a joke, is Google. And then my dad looked at me, he's like, I don't know. And I was shell-shocked because my dad will make up an answer rather than provide none at all. And that's an example of growth, of him going from maybe here to maybe a little bit over here. But I digress. Enough of what I think. Right now, I am genuinely curious about you. So let me just sit back and ask a couple questions. When it comes to thinking about the verts, what kind are you? And secondly, using the spectrum, who do you think is the ideal lover? Emotionally, physically? Pardon the interruption, promise, quick word from our sponsor Squarespace, I'll talk about my three favorite features. One, Squarespace Blueprint AI and SEO tools. Start a completely personalized website with the new guided design system, Squarespace Blueprint. Then launch your site and get discovered fast with the integrated optimized SEO tools so you show up more often to more people and grow the way you want to. Two, flexible payments. For those of you selling things, make checkout seamless for your customers with simple but powerful payment tools, except credit cards, PayPal, Apple Pay, and in eligible countries, offer customers the option to buy now and pay later. Last but not least, Fluid Engine. With Fluid Engine, the next generation website editor from Squarespace, it has never been easier for anyone to unlock unbreakable creativity. To find out what that means and to bring your next big idea to life, go to squarespace.com, get a two week free trial, no credit cards offered. And once you love what you have started to build, launch your site and go back to squarespace.com, but this time put slash shambooty, cause that's how you get 10% off a website or domain. <laughs> Sometimes the truth hurts. <laughs>